Okay, we are recording. Okay, I call this meeting to order, the meeting of the Board of Assessors, October 13th, 2022. And um, first, these uh, preliminary remarks pursuant to, the ch to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. In Massachusetts, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by Zoom or by telephone um, or through www.amherstma.gov. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by technological means. And I also want to point out that uh, it's my understanding that this meeting, the tape, the recording of this meeting will be posted on Amherst, Massachusetts's YouTube channel. I call the meeting to order. Okay, and with that being said, as we know, the town is recording this meeting. If anyone else is doing so at this time, please notify me now. And hearing none, we will move on. Um, I don't believe there are any members of the public present, so we will move on from public participation to um, approve the minutes from 922. Let me share my screen with you. Ken, have you had a chance to look at the minutes? No. Okay. You wanna take a quick scan of the minutes, please, Ken? Can you do that? Here we go. Oop. That's not what I wanted to share with you. There you go. Can you see that document? If you can enlarge it. I can, whoops. Is that okay? No. Uh, that, that's today's agenda. Yeah. Nope, this is, oh, so, oh, you're seeing the wrong screen. Sorry about that. Yeah. Let me do that. Can you see that? Not yet. Okay, let me stop sharing. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, I could see it, but, but it was just Sorry too about small. that. It was just too small. There. How's that? That's better. Thank okay. you. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So these are the minutes from the 22nd. Um, I can just briefly go through them for you, Ken. So we um, called the meeting to order at 931. We were all present. Um, our statements were made about being recorded and being remote. Uh, we went over the minutes from the 16th of June and the 18th of August. We um, approved those with friendly amendments on the August 18th uh, minutes. We went over excise abatements and those were approved as well. Uh, and we talked about under the principal assessor update, we talked about preliminary values being submitted, waiting for the okay to post our values on the website for our revaluation um, appeal period with an anticipated council meeting on the 17th of October for our classification hearing. We discussed that chapter applications are due or were due on the 1st of October. And then we scheduled our meeting for today um, with a closing session going into executive session, um, excuse me, at 1014. Uh, and then we did not come back into a public session after the executive session. I, I move to approve the minutes of that September meeting. Second. All okay. those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. okay. All righty. Um, so we will move along to excise abatements. Um, so you will see here that there were two abatements for the week of 9-12 through, well, two days, 9-12 and 9-13 uh, for a calendar year 2022 in the amount of $1,193.11. And then uh, um, moving- Do we want to do, do them all at once or do you want to do them- uh... We can do them all at once if that's okay with you guys. Okay. Um, so then we have uh, September 19th through the 30th. We have one single abatement for calendar year 2021 in the amount of $68.40. And then we have 19 abatements for calendar year 2022 in the amount of $1,240.38. So for that week, totaling $1,338, excuse me, $1,308.78. Um, and then we have October 3rd through the 7th. 
Uh, there are six abatements for the calendar year of 2022, totaling $7,762.94. And that is it for excise. So again, the amounts are 7,006, I'm sorry, $762.94. Total amount for this week was $1,308.78. And then uh, $1,193.11. Okay, I, I move to approve those three sets of weekly abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Excellent. Quickly moving on then, we have a commitment from the Registry of Motor Vehicles for calendar year 2020. So that just means that this bill, for some reason, likely went to another community. Um, and when the person received the bill, um, for some reason, it took them a while to respond and let that community know that they actually lived here in Amherst. So we have received that bill in the amount of $54 and 98 cents. Um, so this page here just is for the uh, collector's office. This page here is for the uh, accounting office. Um, I do see one um, amendment here. I'd like to make, Teresa, it, this says a supplemental real estate tax. Oops. Um, so we just want to make sure to switch that yeah. over to motor vehicle. I'll fix um, we can still vote on this. We can actually we, just um, could remove we also that. Spell September correctly, please. Yes. <laughs> oh, September. <I'm> wrong. <laughs> yes. Um, so we'll make those two corrections on this. Um, again, it is $54.98 for one single excise tax bill. You will see here the valuation of the vehicle was $2,199, totaling $54.98. Okay, so, that, so essentially, how many signatures is that uh, for, for us? Would we be signing three different documents there if we were live? If we were- Yes. Interviewed? Okay. Uh, so I move to approve our signatures on those documents. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, we'll move on. We've got one, uh, two more. So we have commitment number five that comes from the registry for calendar year 2022. So this picks up anyone that has registered their vehicles, uh, gotten new vehicles um, it, since the last commitment that comes from the registry, which they usually come um, about every three months. So this one was totaling $60,671.87. Could we spell Jennifer LaFountain's name correctly, please? Yes. Well, I'm having a good week, aren't I? That's all right. That's all right. So we'll get that corrected before we uh, put any signatures on I'm just there. testing you all. <laughs> Um, and again, we'll switch the supplemental real estate tax on the page to the accounting office as well and change the spelling of September. <laughs> um, so again, the amount of $60,671.87. This page again would go to the accounting office, first page to the collector. And here's the commitment that is coming right out of the billing system. You'll see there was a total of 489 bills, three of those being exempt. Um, so 486 bills were actually committed and we expect to make uh, to receive payment on those in the amount of $60,671.87. And that is reflected there um, for the accounting office as well as up here again to the collector's office. So just, just curious what that bigger number was at the bottom. So the bigger number at the bottom was including the um, three uh, uh, excuse me, the three vehicles that were exempt. Um, so you'll see here, um, there was three of them and they would have been $30 and 72 cents. So they were likely um, older vehicles right. um, that uh, were for some reason registered at that point in the year. Um, so that's why that's slightly different there because we're not expecting to collect payment on those. So we're not committing those bills for payment. Okay, I move to approve. Um, <clears throat> I move to approve our signatures um, uh, on those documents. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Okay. And then lastly, we have another commitment for calendar year 2022. Um, and this is one bill, again, probably sent to us from another community. It probably had the wrong um, address on it or something to that nature. In um, the amount of $12.50, again, here to the um, collector's office. Uh, you will see that reflected again here. And again, we'll fix the supplemental real estate and the September spelling. Um, $12.50 here to the accounting office, as well as the page out of the billing system. Oh, it's showing it, it's actually two bills um, for a total valuation of $500, total excise tax of $12.50. Sorry, are those cars? Um, they probably are, I would guess trailers. Um, okay. it's possible that they're like extremely old cars, but, uh, with the way the registry has changed their system, my guess is they're probably trailers. Okay. Move to approve. I move to approve our signatures on those documents. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And before we move on again, I just want to re remind you all that those documents will be adjusted The spelling and the um, supplemental uh, tax will be switched over to uh, excise commitments. Okay. Moving along, we have a release of classified forest agricultural uh, chapter land lien. Um, so this parcel here has been sold. Um, this is located on Henry Street. Um, it's a parcel of land. Um, currently, there's no buildings on it, um, but there it, it has been um, classified as chapter in the past. Um, so we are going to be removing this lien because the new owner is actually changing um, the amount of acres that's going to be in chapter, um, as well as the actual use on the property. Um, so first, first lien here is to remove the chapter land lien for the parcel located on Henry Street. Um, it is map 6C, lot 284. So we just ask here that um, we have a vote to, to be able to do that. And then um, Richard to please come into the office um, to sign this one as well as a few others. Okay. Do you know what address? Do you know what address that is close to? It is. Um, I can tell you really quickly. It's North it's, Amherst, right? Yeah, it's right um, where the where the um, power lines cross the road. Um, there's an there's a house that's set back almost like behind the power lines. It's right next to that. If you're headed towards Cushman Store, it's going to be on your right. Okay. Just a note, we need to have everybody sign this. I'm sorry, yes. Yes, we can have everyone sign this. So everyone's got to come in physically to, to sign? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll be back at the end of next week. Okay. okay, that should be fine. So if we could just get a vote, if you all agree to remove uh, this 16.3931 acres from chapter. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Hi. Uh, okay. Okay. Then moving along, you will see the first lien here is for the same parcel. It's actually including another parcel as well. Um, the new owner of this, excuse me, I have a bug in my face. Um, <laughs> the new owner of this property is Alexander, Alexander Niefer. Um, so his intention for the property is to put um, 16 acres of the 18 into chapter 61A on parcel uh, map 6C, lot 284, as well as two acres of the six, uh, excuse me, of the three on 6C, lot nine. Um, so both of these parcels are contiguous and they will both be, uh, a portion of one will be farmed and, and a good portion of the other will be farmed. So this is a new lien um, just um, giving the town the first rate of refusal. And um, so we're, again, we're looking just for a signature on this one from all of you and the approval to um, record. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So, 
just a question on, on, on the net effect of what is happening here. Mm -hmm. He's expanding the 61A? So he um, he is expanding the 61A. Um, it's also something that has to happen just because he's a new owner of the property. So we have to record the lien anyway. But it just so happens that, yes, he he does want to um, expand a little bit because this parcel 6C9 was um, previously not in chapter. Yeah. OK. Um, so he's going to put two acres of that in in the in chapter. It actually works out to be just over an acre that he's adding because if you see before, he had just over 16 acres on the first parcel, um, whereas now he's just putting exactly 16. Um, so it's it's not a huge change in those two parcels. Okay. So, uh, so these parcels have their own frontage on Henry Street? That's correct, yes. Okay. Right now, I think it's mostly just the wooded section between um, the two houses, like, again, if you're headed into Cushman from Amherst, um, it'll be on your right hand side. I believe it's just the wooded area there. That's the frontage on both of those parcels. All right. And moving along, we have another sale. Um, so we have a um, another lien to be uh, changed from the owner's name. So we have a uh, property on Market Hill consisting of 4.5 acres. It's map 3D parcel 81. Um, so again, they're looking to just put this whole piece of, of property um, in chapter. So just looking again for a signature to be able to record the lien. Is it there a minimum size? Yes. So there is, it's a minimum of five. I believe the next lean is the same people and it is a 0.5 acre lot. Um, so they will be contiguous to, to create the five total acres uh, minimum. So these could never be released one at a time then. Right. Because if they were, um, if, if they decided to not farm this piece, for example, the three uh, map 3d parcel 89, the other parcel would no longer qualify and vice versa. Um, so both of these have to go hand in hand um, to be able to, um, to, to be a part of chapter 61A. Um, so if you would like to vote on them together, that would be fine as well because they, they go hand in hand. All right. I so move, move that, we, um, that we, we consider them together and um, to, to get to the minimum. Um, so, so moved to- Set. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Lee, did, Lee, did you remember that there was a minimum? No, I didn't. Thank you, Ken. Okay. Okay. I feel better about that. <laughs> yeah, Thank <right>. you, Ken. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what it was, but I thought there was. Wow. Yes. Um, I, I, Good memory. I, my course was a while ago, so that's my. Yeah, experience. right. <laughs> Um, so this here is a uh, document that comes from DCR, as you can see, this is a forest management plan that has been written up um, for um, Helen Perrin. Um, and this is a property that has been in chapter 61 for many, many years. There's a um, total of 46.9 acres of land on this particular parcel, but 41.6 of them um, is to be classified as 61. Um, so this is just a renewal of this chapter 61 plan. You'll see that um, there's a, a trustee, Tom Thomas Perrin has signed on this document. The state forester has signed on the document and you will see here, um, this shows the time frame of this particular plan. So it'll go from January of 2023 to December of 2032. Believe it or not. It, um, so is basically, Helen what we're still alive? Is she still? I believe so. I'm not a hundred percent sure, is but Thomas I think... Perrin the son and Helen Perrin the mother. Or yes, yes, okay. yes. Um, so um, what we're looking for here is just the signature by Richard, but a vote on from the board. And what we do is we need an in-person signature. We have three copies of this form. We keep one. We give the other two back to the owners, they keep one and they give one to their forester to put in their file. So again, just a quick vote on this one and a signature from Richard. So this is an extension. So the other one ran out or runs out then to this year? 
Yes. Yeah, so every 10 years, when you have a um, forest management plan, every 10 years, the forester will come out to your property and redo the forest management plan. Um, this could be for a number of reasons. This could be that you it's time to actually cut trees. Um, this could be that you've had some serious damage to the property and um, it could go a number of ways. It could be like, okay, this can't be in chapter anymore. It could be that this needs more than 10 years to be cut. Um, it could be that now we're not cutting this parcel because we're leaving it um, to create carbon, which is something that they're working towards um, in the state level. Um, so there's a number of reasons why a 10 year cycle would need to be re-updated. Um, but basically that's what they're doing is the forester goes out and takes a walk around the property and looks at what's there and what's going on and um, creates a plan for that particular piece of land. So, so regardless, there's a 10 year cycle where it has to be renewed? In chapter 61 with a plan, yes. 61. Yes. Yep. You can also have a forest management plan in chapter 61A, for example, like with Christmas trees, yeah. um, you can work with a forester uh, to, to do something of that nature. Um, same thing. You would still have to re redo your plan every 10 years, but you still have to file the application in the office every year for 61A. Whereas yeah. with chapter 61, just forestry, you only have to file every 10 years. So refresh my memory, 61, does the town have the right to buy this if they sell it? Yes. Yep. Any chapter, 61, 61A, oh, okay. 61B, we all have um, the first right of refusal, which is 120 days once we find out that the property will be going up on the market. And we have the ability to buy it at market price. So what would happen is um, the uh, an appraiser would go out and appraise the parcel, and that's what the town would be able to purchase it at. So, um, so again, with this one, we're just looking for a vote to approve this plan that was created by the forester and record this lien with a signature from Richard. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And this is just a continuation of the plan. I, I probably should have showed you that before uh, the vote. But um, again, this just breaks down the acres. Um, so it's a total of 46.9. Excluded acres is 5.3 and the total classified acres is 41.6. And this just goes kind of into detail um, as to what exactly is going to be happening on this par parcel. So I, I'll go through it fairly quickly, but just so, cause you guys have these documents, if you wanna read through them, you're welcome to do that. Um, but basically this is just gonna explain, this shows you the map of the parcel and kind of what's going on where. Um, this one's a little bit more difficult to look at. It's the topography. Um, and again, so, more. So signatures. these numbers have to actually line up with their lean on their chapters too. That's these correct. Numbers. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So I am going to stop sharing my screen for now. Um, and uh, the next thing on the agenda for today is the discussion of the classification hearing. So basically, I just wanted to let you guys know we're doing it slightly different this year because of revaluation. Um, so the intention was to actually have the classification hearing this coming Monday, the 17th, which uh, is not going to be able to happen. Reason being is um, we would have to have posted 48 hours in advance in the newspaper that we are going to be having this hearing. At this point, I don't know yet if our values will be set. And the reason is because when you have revaluation, you have to post your values online for one week um, once you get the approval from the DOR so that people can look at their values. And if they feel as though that um, something is incorrect on their record card, such as um, square footage, number of bathrooms, number of kitchens, um, style of home, Maybe it's the use code. So maybe we have it listed as a two family, but it's actually a one family or vice versa. Um, so if there's some sort of an error on your record card, you have the ability to come in and dispute that um, with a hearing. Um, so we have to post that for a week. That week ends today at 4.30. So once we get that removed from the website, the DOR then has to approve our LA4. So basically what they're doing is they're saying, yes, we agree with your values we approve them to be submitted for final valuation. Once we have that, then we can have the classification hearing. 
So with that being said, because I don't know if that's going to happen today or tomorrow, we were a little uncomfortable with having the classification hearing be posted in the newspaper in fear that we didn't get our values approved, which is what happened last year. So I didn't want that to happen twice and to have people lose confidence in our office. Um, so what we're going to do instead is have a presentation of the um, proposed hearing on uh, the 17th, which is Monday. And then um, we will have the actual classification hearing on November 7th. So it'll be a very, very brief re, you know, a few slides from this presentation that I'm going to do on Monday, just saying, you know, this is our recommendation. This is why, please vote. Um, so if you are so inclined to join either of those meetings, you are not required, but please welcome to do that. Okay, um, well, I'm out of the country on the 7th of November, but um, um do, you, do we have an idea of when the, in the meeting, the council meeting, your, your presentation will occur? I was just meeting? speaking with Sean this morning about that, and we'll have a better idea by the end of this weekend, so I can let you guys all know that um, once the agenda is actually posted for the council meeting. Um, right now, it's we're assuming it's going to be earlier in the meeting, so somewhere between like 6.30 and 7, possibly, because um, usually they do the the presentations like that in the beginning of the meeting. Um, right. But I can give you a better idea once I have that. Right. So I, I I would, let's see, I'm trying to remember what I'm doing. Um, I, I think um, I would be able to attend on the 17th. I, this is all going to be by Zoom. Are yes. You, are, are you going to be in the room or are you? I don't think so. I think it's all completely remote at this point. All right. Okay. So, um, so, so we'll be welcome, welcome as public Yes. Okay. So we yes. can just join. But again, yeah, you don't have, it's not required, um, but you know. So on the, seventh, on the seventh, I think it would be good if one of us was, at least one of us yeah. was there. Um, yeah. And that's, again, that's not required, but, but totally up to you guys if you want to do that. And the seventh will be a very quick presentation, just kind of a reminder of what, um, what was presented this past Monday. Um, and then we'll be asking for the actual vote from council. So when do you think the um, the potential uh, random discussion about residential tax exempt, the residential exemption would come in? When, so when um, I do plan to have a slight um, presentation during the classification package this Monday. Okay. Um, but we're not going to go too, too into detail because at this point in the game, if they want to vote in the residential exemption, uh, for this year, there's just no chance of getting our tax bills out on time. Right. Um, so the recommendation would be if they feel so inclined to vote that through that they postpone it for uh, fiscal year 2024. Okay. And I, and I just think it needs to be, if, well, I think Ken and I, I think are, have, have expressed this before that we, I think our principal assessor has been ready to do a uh, uh, sort of a tutorial on the residential tax exemption for some time now. Mm -hmm. And um, it hasn't gotten on the schedule. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not us. That's no. the problem here. <laughs> um, and along the lines of classification hearing and things that um, need to, the board needs to do, although I said, you know, classification is not a requirement. We do have some requirements that, that we need you guys for. Um, I know with the signatures in Gateway, there were some issues with permissions. I know Lee wasn't able to actually even see some of the forms that he needed to be able to sign. So we will get that fixed. And for future board members, we'll make sure that all of that information is available to them. Um, but there is forms that need to be filled out. Um, our comptroller is recommending that if the page says Board of Assessors, that the Board of Assessors actually signs it. I think just about every page says Board of Assessors. With that being said, uh, that's a requirement of two signatures. Um, and then I will also be signing those things as well. So um, although I'm not a member of the board, uh, it's just two signatures on those things. So um, just another reminder to please make sure you're... Um, Gateway is working, that you know your passwords, that you know how to get into Gateway. And then I will be emailing you, hopefully, um, 
it won't be in such a, uh, an urgency as this past time. And, um, you know, we'll be able to get those things signed off. So can you tell us what is the zone of time in which we're supposed to uh, um, so it really kind of all depends because it depends on, you know, if you're in reval, it depends on how quickly you can get your things approved by the state, how quickly you get your things into the state. Um, other departments that need to put their information in there, they need to be able to get that done. So it's, but it's really like the time frame, I would say, would be between October and December, um, where we need to be able to at least get into Gateway and, um, you know, make sure that our, our, that we're able to see all the screens that we need to see. Um, and something that I think I would really love to work on for the board, as well as just this office, because we're gonna be having some staffing changes, is a timeline of things such as this that um, we would be able to refer to throughout the year saying, you know, August, we're slow and we say, okay, what is coming? Maybe I can jump ahead and go into Gateway and, and make sure all my stuff is working. Okay. Um, so something that I would like to, you know, come up with in the in the future um, for all of us to sort of keep us in line. <laughs> so let me so let me just make sure we um, it doesn't just sit there. What what's what's where does the initiative for this have to come from us or your office? No, me. Or, okay. This will come from me. Um, basically, what's going to be happening is I'm going to be putting our data into the gateway system, which is where we get our approval from the DOR. Um, this allows them to be able to look at our data. And once I'm ready for you to sign on those particular documents, I will be reaching out via email probably. I may, may call you if, if it's an urgent request, but um, I like to try to email you. I'd like to try to give you some time to be able to sign these things. Occasionally there is some urgency as is the, the other day, uh, but we were able to get that uh, right. situated and everything was worked out there. So, so. We, so we need to start, um, the, the next time we need to, well, I don't know. Um, you're you're going to come up with a sort of a calendar that we can all have and post. It. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I have a very vague calendar that I used to use in uh, Greenfield, but I'd like to, you know, specifically make that to, for us and and add more things to it. And also, um, if there's things that you guys want me to add to it for to help you out, I think that would be great as well. Kim, did you discover why I wasn't able to get to the screens? And yes, you did not have permissions for some reason to be able to see the certification, the the um, the pre-certification mm -hmm. screens, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure why that was given, but yeah, because that, um, would, that would have been changed because I had permissions before. Yeah, so I'm mm -hmm. not sure if there was an update somewhere that just somehow uh, knocked you out or what happened, but okay. But um, I was able to sign on your behalf. Um, well, and you. so that worked out perfectly fine because Richard okay. had signed as well. So okay. it, it worked out perfectly. So okay. is this one of those rare instances when I'm actually more in order than the, the other two members? <laughs> We're not going to go there. <laughs> that is weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that sort of segues into the... Uh, uh, I guess, test. Kim, yes. uh, are you going to... Are you saying in the future you'll your signature will be on the form online? So my signature, I like to sign the yes, forms sir. as the assessor anyway, just saying, yes, I agree with my board. And yes, I put these values here. Um, whether or not my signature is required, I like to do that just so that okay. the DOR sees that I, you know, I'm in agreement. But there is, um, I think, is there just a place about on, is there a every, place online for you to sign? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's the same okay. place. It's just the little checkbox on the bottom. Um, okay. And I think just about every form that we have okay. says. It'd, be, help, it'd be helpful if you sign first before you told us to go sign. Okay. I can we do know, that. We know, where, we know where to look then. Okay. I can do that. Um, and if it's helpful, like I had sent those screenshots, I'm happy to do that as well. Cause I know this is something that only happens once a year. So it's not easy to forget. I mean, it is easy to forget. Um, you know, when you don't do it that often and the system is a little confusing. So um, I'm happy to do that as well, if that's helpful. Is, is it also possible to send out the, your presentation for Monday ahead of time to us? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, I'm meeting yep. with Paul uh, this afternoon and Sean. Okay. Once that is done, then I will absolutely send that to you. And I'm going to put a note on my desk right now so that I don't forget. Thank you. And um, I, I just want to say that as a member of the, as, as one member of the board speaking for myself, um, the council needs to be clear that we are ready to do a more leisurely tour through the residential exemption and the, you know, the split rate stuff. You know, uh, we're ready to be part of a sort of an education 
process for the council mm -hmm. um, that that leads up to this in a more in a more leisurely way so that they're not feeling as though um, you know their their discretion is being sort of um, circumvented if, if, if people on the board understand what I mean I mean essentially mm -hmm. they're going to be told that we they can't do the exemption or the split rate this year because the bills won't go out on time but it seems to me that the the uh, principal assessor is ready to educate the council about this stuff if, if they can if if you can just get on the calendar oh yeah. if they want us if they want us to if they yeah. want right. us right exactly yeah. Yeah. right yeah. right and has right and ready. the presentation yeah. was sent to like you guys know it was sent to paul last year um and then i believe the council president so um they are aware that we have that and has had and have had it uh for quite some time so okay good but i understand but, yeah. what you're saying as well yeah. so yeah. okay um, so segueing into the assessor update, um, the values, once they're removed from the website today, um, we're just waiting for our final approval from the DOR. Uh, so I have however, a question, I have a question about that. Is there any way for you to know how many people have actually reviewed their card? Um, I think that there's, um, I don't know how to do it, but I think there is a way that if I spoke with, um, Brianna or someone from the IT department, they can track that through our website. So we don't actually know how many people saw the notice and then looked at their at their record at their records. No, we don't. However, Amherst does keep the records on our website at all times throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also just another sort of people can go and look at it anytime. And so if they know something's wrong, um, I would hope that they would talk to me about it uh, throughout the year, but this also gives them that extra time to be able to do that, which in every, in a, in a um, non recertification year, in it, they call them interim years. Um, this time frame doesn't exist. So if you find that there's something wrong with your value, you have to wait at this point to get it um, to go into the appeal period in January. So this is just an extra sort of check. Um, so I assume nobody contacted you. As of right now, nobody has contacted me. They do have until 4.30 today. Um, and if that happens, then I have to schedule a hearing with them. Hearing is very simple. It's just them coming in and explaining to me what's wrong. Me looking at the record card, potentially going out and doing an inspection of the parcel. Um, so that again could hold up our classification hearing from Monday night as well. So that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it this year. Um, so... With that being said, if we don't get anybody at, as of 4.30 today, um, then our values would be sent over to Sandra Bruzzo, who is the um, final say at the DOR, and she would then um, review our values and approve them, hopefully without any changes. In your, um, in, your, in your work with a prior community, with another community, did you have people who contacted you in that, uh, in that process elsewhere? So... Um, my very first year working for the town of Greenfield was yep. a reval year, I, I believe. And I don't really know what was going on at that point um, because it was really in the assessor's hands yep. um, as I was still learning what I was doing. Yep. <laughs> um, and so that I don't know. Um, last year was a revaluation year. And unfortunately, um, it was uh, I was only there for a portion of it because I came here. So I can't really respond to that. Um, I don't think it has happened that often. Um, I feel like our records here in Amherst are pretty accurate to what is actually out there with the exception, of course, of those that are under construction, um, which, you know, once they're completed, then I think, you know, and I'm not saying that they're not accurate, but obviously, you know, if I go out and inspect today, tomorrow it's going to be different so that's what i mean in, in regards to um, construction properties but um you know i think our records are very accurate here so i i'm not surprised that we haven't had anybody um so again once 4 30 hits today if we've had no appeals um then we'd just be waiting for sandra to approve our our la4 which is our values once we get that approval we can officially post the classification hearing, which hopefully will be for um, November 7th. And again, that will just be sort of a reiteration of uh, Monday's presentation. Um, 
Aside from that, um, I think I've mentioned that the chapter land applications were due on October 1st. Um, so that date has passed. So we will be sending out reminder notices to any ha that have not responded. Um, although that's not a requirement, I do like to do that, especially for the farmers, because right now they're busy. They're trying to clean up for the for the winter months. They're trying to you know grab their last crops before they get ruined by the frost or anything like that. So, um, you know, I know it's a busy time of year. And ha again, having to do something once a year, it's easily forgotten. Um, so. We do send out those reminders to all members of any type of chapter 61, 61A or 61B. Um, what, what we've been working on in the office too is, um, you know, collecting all of those applications aside from many others um, and, and doing a little cleanup in the office. Um, I, I don't know, you can't really see behind me, but a little bit has changed. It's there's a little less things there. Um, you know, we've been going through paperwork. We're going to be looking at our retention schedule and seeing what we can get rid of um, that we no longer have to keep anymore. Um, so that's been taking up quite a bit of time. Uh, personal exemptions are still coming in pretty heavily, uh, but we did send out a reminder to those who have not yet applied this year that applied last year. Um, just to try to get them in before the tax bills actually get mailed, because it's just nice to be able to apply those to the tax bills right away, rather than have them respond um, at a later date saying, I got my tax bill, but I didn't get my exemption. Um, and um, I think that's really like the, the, you know, the majority of what's, what we've been doing. I just, I just went to a uh, uh, conference the other day about how to get ready for setting your tax rate and all of that, um, that was that was pretty helpful. Um, but otherwise, I think that's the majority of what's been going on here in the office. You talked about some staff changes coming? Yes, so Teresa will be retiring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we will be getting a new person coming into the office, whether it be you know someone new just to Amherst or someone new altogether to the assessor's office or someone new inside of the town moving over. You know, I don't know what what that will bring, but um, so we've actually also been working on um, how to booklets, so just cheat sheets on how to do all of the things that we do every day. Um, and again, you know, depending on the person that comes in, those are going to be extremely helpful because um, if it's someone coming from another town, we just may do something slightly different. We may have a different system than them. Um, so it's just just helpful to have those. If it's someone brand new to the assessing world altogether, um, it's great to have those when you don't have a clue what you're doing, um, because then you have those to back up your work and to be able to say, yeah, I did it right. Look, I looked at the direction. So um, just a nice thing to have. Um, What's your current staffing right now? Um, so it's myself and Teresa full time, and then we have um, Stephen, which is part time. And when do you okay. think you'll post the new job? Um, it's a little up in the air still, but it should be sometime in the beginning of next calendar year. So we're not we're not necessarily getting an overlap for Teresa. Would actually we will get an overlap of maybe a month or so, depending on how fast the application process goes, how fast, you know, if we get anybody that applies, um, you know, if we get any internals, things like that, it really, it kind of depends on, on what the outcome will be. Um, but we, we definitely will get at least a month of overlap. Okay. That's great. Right. But those how-to books are nice to have anyway, even if oh, yeah. you've been here forever, because sometimes I have to refer back to them with those processes that you do once a year. Like I have one for inputting the tax bills into the billing system because I do it twice a year and it's different for preliminary versus finals. So finals has a lot more steps. So it's nice to just refer back to that and have the screenshots of exactly where you need to go. So it's sort of mindless to, to do, which is nice. So is that um, something new for the office? I think there's been, well, it sounds like there's been a few of them done in the past for more complicated things. Um, I think, uh, like, for example, the uh, inputting of the tax bills and the, um, the excise tax bills, I think that there have been those around, but we're sort of digging deeper into that and saying, you know, even daily processes, which hasn't probably happened in a while because Teresa's been here for a while and David was here for a while and um, so I think, um, those are sort of newer to the, to the booklet. 
So are, have you submitted your budget request for next year? Not yet. Or not yet. Not yet. And actually, let's um let's make note to put that on the agenda for the next meeting too, because um, if we have any questions, concerns, um, I do want to mention to you guys a few things that I might need to add to the budget. Um, but let's put that on the agenda for next time, next meeting. Okay. Um, all right. So it looks like we would be looking to to um, schedule a meeting for November. Um, now, Richard, you said you're not going to be I'm here. So what? I'm not, I'm not back until, um, well, practically speaking, the 11th. Okay. So we could do the 17th. Uh, the 24th fine. is a holiday. So if we can't do the 17th, then I would recommend that we do a different day of the week just for the month of November. The 24th is Thanksgiving. Yeah. So we're not going to do, <laughs> we won't do that. Um, but I'm, but, I'm so not here say, the week, just so you know, I'm not here the week of the 17th either. So. Yeah. So I would say we should we should either do it the 17th or I would recommend that we do it on a different day um, mm. just so that we can have a meeting in the month of November. I think it's important, especially with classification um, being the seventh. Um, but I but, you know, if we can't make the 17th work, then it's I think it's completely OK to do a different day of the week just for well, the month of November. I'm OK with the 17th, but others. I'm OK. On the seven, I'm OK on the 17th. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. And you're okay with uh, the still the 930 time? 930, right. Yes, please. Okay. All right. So we'll schedule the next meeting for November 17th at 930 a.m. Uh, I'm going to assume that it's going to be uh, completely remote again. I think we have until April or May of this. Um, I know we started to do the hybrid and it seemed to be working okay, but it was, you know, Whatever people want to do, just just let me know um, if we want to go back to that. So um, with that being said, I think the next thing that we would need to do is go into executive session to look at a couple of personal exemptions. Um, and I don't anticipate a return to public section after that meeting. Okay. Um, so we just, just to, need a vote to go into executive session whenever you're ready. Just to make sure, um, just so we're, um, we're, we're, we're straight on the public portion. Uh, it's just it's it, you say it's a couple of personal exemptions to review. Yes. Okay, and that's it. Right. The, um, just the, the the review and the vote on those, and that's it. Okay. All right. I I move that we go into executive session for that for that for that limited purpose. With Second. no return uh, with no, to public with session. No return to a public session. Right. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and that's at ten. 22. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording again. I just want to make it clear that we will not be coming back to public section after the executive session. Thank you.